Hello, welcome to this demo. We're going to install OpenShift 4.7 on VMware uh, 6.7 Update 3 using the IPI or the Installer Provision Infrastructure method. This will automatically create all the nodes and resources internal um, to the VMware uh, cluster for us. I've got three nodes here um, that it'll build on top of. And uh, let's see. Yeah, there are some prereqs that we have to take care of. First thing is we need to uh, make sure that there's DNS uh, resolution for api.cluster.domain uh, and um, if you're using wildcards then asterisk.apps.cluster.domain uh, ingress DNS records or sorry ingress uh, VIPs uh, to gain access to it externally from the cluster into it so that that'll have to be done um, however it'll build all the artifacts internal to the cluster for us so we really don't have anything else to worry about uh, prereqs back to that uh, we will need the um, uh, clustering tools so go to cloud.redhat.com log in there go to cluster manager right here and then create cluster under data center you'll scroll down to vSphere uh, I'm on a Mac so um, it's gonna it popped up with Mac but you can also do the install from Linux um, I typically leave this window open so I can copy the pool secret. You can also download it if you'd like. Um, and then, of course, you want to add your binaries for OC and kubectl for the version of the release. This is 4.7, and the uh, kubectl Kubernetes version is 1.20. Um, these tools are available on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Uh, because we're doing IPI, we do not need to worry about downloading the uh, CoreOS OVA. It'll go ahead and do that for us as part of the install. Uh, let's see if that's it. I think that's all we have to do. Um, let me, yeah, okay, there's nothing in there. All right, so we'll run. I've already done, downloaded the binary, so uh, we're good to go. Let's see, open shift uh, install, create. Now you could just do create cluster and it'll just go through the prompt and um, build the install config YAML and go ahead and start building all the components for you. Uh, we're going to do uh, create build config. Uh, or install config just so you can take a look at it. All right, so uh, you can skip this step if you're just going to assume all the defaults. So, uh, OpenShift install create install config, and I'm going to put it in a directory IPI. Then it'll prompt us through here. I'm going to load the SSH key so that I can uh, log in with my local account as the core user into the nodes. Uh, we're going to select vSphere, and then my vCenter is vCenter dot uh, home dot land account name password and it's going to get connected yep look for my default storage uh, which is uh, the um, my vSAN and my default network here is net172 which is on my 10 gig uh, virtual IP address for the um, API 172.16.1.15 and then for my ingress this is uh, to get gain access to the console 172.16.1.16 uh, base domain is redcloud.land cluster name is openshift and then my pool secret will come back over here copy that paste it in here and we're ready to go. Okay, so let's take a look at it. We can VI, um, IPI, install config. And you can see here I've got my uh, vSphere uh, information, the networking information. If you want to change this to OVN Kubernetes, now would be the time to change that uh, and make any modifications to your networks here. Um, so the cluster network, essentially this is for your um, pod network and then this is for your service network so each node will get its own uh, network here so but if you want to change those now's the time here's my cluster name and then my uh, compute and control plane so compute would be the worker nodes and the control plane would be your master or manager nodes um, and you can further define how you want these resources to be uh, allocated uh, compute wise so if you wanted to specify how many cpus or how much disk space or how much um, memory you want to allocate to these nodes you can specify that in in these areas I'll leave the link to the documentation in the description below so you'll have access to that and just see how how that part works we're gonna assume the default it'll eat up about um, 900 gig of total disk space uh, once it's done 
uh, but we should be able to get at least a working cluster up uh, for IPI. So that's it. I'm just going to assume the defaults here. Save out of that, and then we'll just do open shift install create cluster directory IPI. And that'll get spin up, get connected to my uh, vSphere instance here. Uh, we'll go here, and then under this, it'll create a subfolder, which would be my um, cluster name hyphen um, uh, cluster ID. It'll put Put a new folder there and then it'll build there it is and then it'll pull down the uh, openshift red hat core os next uh, you can see it uh, should be yeah, pulling it down right here and there's the core os image it's building it and then it'll start building all the manager nodes and bootstrap nodes and once the um, masters join bootstrapping it'll spin up the worker nodes uh, all automatically within this uh, repo or in this folder all right so i'll be back in a few minutes um, we'll just let this run Okay, the cluster should be up. Let's uh, export our kube config, and we'll cat kube uh, password. There we go. And we can check our nodes now. Uh, let's see, get nodes. Yep, there's our six nodes. Our cluster ID uh, associated to them right here. And OC get co. All of our services are running. That looks good. We can log in over here. Kube admin, paste our password, log in. And yep, we can see our IPA cluster is up and running now. Um, yeah, so it looks good. Yeah, so it did take a little bit of time, uh, but we we're up and running. We can go ahead and start adding some more services and getting our cluster uh, tweaked just the way we like it. Anyway, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate you checking out, like, share, and uh, until next time, thanks.